What's going on everybody? My name is Ben and welcome back to the bench for another episode of our Airfix 148 scale Seafire FR-47 for the Korean War group build. Today we're going to jump back into the kit, see what else we can do, so let's get started. Last time we went ahead and worked a lot on the fuselage. We got the cowling installed and well it's not great as you can see we have a huge gap there at the end of the cowling. We also have an issue with the cowling being a little bit too thin and the fuselage being a little bit too fat. We also have a bit of a step here right in front of the canopy that's going to be a a little troubled getting out, but I think we can go ahead and do it with our jewel files, sandpaper, and all that good stuff. So yeah, we have a lot of cleanup, a lot of filling to do, and that's going to take some time. I also worked a little bit on the center section of the wing, and so far so good on that, but we do have to go ahead and see how it mates up to the fuselage, and then eventually install the outer portions of the wings and kind of get that thing looking a little bit more like a sea fire. So let's go ahead and just jump into our first time lapse. We're going to tackle this crazy gap here by the cowling, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and use some styrene. Just kind of double and triple up on the thickness and just drop that right into place, glue it down with some super glue, trim it down, sand it, and hopefully that would do nicely. I will have to go ahead and rescribe that, but I'm expecting to have to do a lot of rescribing right around this area, so eh, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and jump into that time lapse, guys, figure out this cowling gap, get everything filled, get everything sanded, work on those seams, use some super glue to go ahead and take care of some of those openings, and then we'll be back and I'll show you guys what we come up with. Let's get this episode going. All right, we are back, and so far so good. The fuselage is looking decent. It's not great, but I think it's a good place to go ahead and kind of let it cure off to the side, and we're going to switch over then to the wings. We're going to go ahead and work on the outer portions of the wings. Now, I've actually heard that there is going to be a gap on these wings no matter what you do. It's usually a gap on the bottom portion right on the wing fold area, and I am very much expecting there to be a huge gap we're going to have to go ahead and fill. So let's go ahead and just give it a quick test fit and see what we're looking at. Top portion of the wing looks okay. It's not not great, but it's okay. And the bottom portion, that's where we have our gap. So at least we know that going in, that might make things a little bit easier for us. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to install the wing portions individually. So we'll go ahead and install the top portion of the outer wing panel get that cured up. Then we'll go ahead and glue in the bottom portion of the panel and see how that goes. There's still a lot of seam work that has to be done, a lot of polishing and sanding and rescribing. 
Now I've actually heard to eliminate this seam altogether, you can actually take the FR46's lower portion of the wing and go ahead and glue on top of those the FR47's wing sections. Then all you have to do is scribe in the wing fold mechanism to go ahead and match up with the 47 and you're good to go. Now, I don't know if that would really work and I can't really try it because while well, I've already glued on the center sections of the wing, so it is what it is. But keep that in mind if you end up building one of these, that actually might be a way to go. So let's go ahead and jump in here. First, we're going to install the top portion of the wing, let that cure up. Then we'll go ahead and switch over to the bottom portion and we'll hopefully we can minimize that gap just a little bit. Now moving right along here guys, before we can install the bottom portion of the wings, we need to make sure we open up any of the locating tabs for our ordnance. And this actually gives you two options. It gives you the option for rockets and for fuel tanks. And I've been looking through my references and I've been reading up a little bit on it. And it looks like the image that I have for this particular aircraft shows as having those tanks. And I think that's just different enough that I think it'll be kind of visually interesting. I mean, otherwise I just put some rockets on there and good to go. But like I said, I want to try to make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to go with the combat tanks. Now for the gap, I'm planning on using just a very thin piece of styrene. We're just going to cut a nice little slice off of it. It can be pretty thin here. We don't need a lot. Then we'll just go ahead and insert this into that gap, glue it down with some Tamiya Extra Thin, or in this case, we're using some Cement S, and then we'll just see how it works. I'm hoping this is going to be perfectly fine and it's not going to screw up anything. We might have to come in and rescribe, or maybe we don't. I'm not really sure. It depends on how it looks once we get this all figured out. So a little bit of glue here, and we'll go ahead and call this one done. Let it set up and, well, move on to the next one. So let's go ahead and jump into our next time lapse here, guys. I want to work on the outer wing panels for the other side. I want to get that all set up. I want to then glue on that section to the wing. Then we'll have a completed wing subassembly, and we can go ahead and glue that onto the fuselage. So let's go ahead and jump back in there, get these wings all attached. We'll be back, and I'll show you what we come up with.
All right, everybody. So we are back. And as you can see, the sea fire is coming right along. The cowling is on. The wings are on. We've got that long extended oil cooler up in the front there. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Now, let's get you a quick close up here and I'll show you what we got going on. As you can see, we had a lot of backfilling here for this cowling gap. I ended up using a bunch of styrene, just kind of sandwiched together and just kind of slotted it in there. And that worked out okay. Then I came back and did a lot of extensive sanding and filing. We will have to rescribe. That is a definite for sure. But I won't know exactly where to rescribe yet until I go ahead and get it all primed up. Luckily for me, the wing root wasn't too bad on the right side, but here on the left side, this is where we had a little bit of a gap, so I had to go ahead and backfill that with some styrene. That worked out okay, the other side is fine. We do of course have some gaps in the very front leading edge, so we're going to have to come back eventually and fill those in. Also on the undersurface, we can see a huge gap right here between the ailerons and the flaps. I had to backfill that with some styrene and sand it down. I might need to rescribe that here, but man, there was a huge gap. And it's actually the same way on the other side as well, so at least they matched. And then of course, a very small strip of styrene here on the undersurface of the wing fold mechanism and I think we're good to go. I did come in and mask off these little windows here for the cameras and I installed our nav lights so those have to be painted. There's a little bit of a gap between the wing and the fuselage. I should be able to come back in and do a little bit of work on that and I think we'll be good to go. Of course here up at the front we have an extended oil cooler which I had to come in and actually take care of the seam on the inside of the fuselage. I didn't actually know you could see that but yeah it's very very prominent so went ahead and fixed that up. Now moving on back here to the back of the aircraft I installed the tail and we actually hooked on the stinger type hook so that looks pretty good but as you can see guys we are pretty much good to go to go ahead and give it a break here for today we have the wings on the fuselage is buttoned up we have the cowling on and i gotta tell you aside from the propellers and the tail we're looking pretty decent next episode we'll be able to come in and prime maybe drop a little bit of mr surfacer around different areas and then of course add in the tail planes and maybe even the radiators or whatnot. I don't really know, but we have a lot more work to do. And I think honestly, this is coming right along. If it wasn't for this cowling, I think we'd be much closer to being finished. But you know what? It is what it is. And I actually like the look of the resin. We're going to go ahead and just keep on keeping on. But like I said, guys, that is it. We are all finished up for today's episode. So I wanted to go ahead and say thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here next week on episode number five. And until then, you know the drill. Go out there and get yourself some bench time. Have some fun. Build something cool. We'll see you back here next week, guys, for episode number five. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.